Hey, how's it going? Uh, today's video is going to be about bedazzling lures and in specifically uh, my vertical jigs that I'm kind of like home assembling um, on a budget. Uh, I'm kind of 50-50 in regards to making things shiny um, if they actually catch fish or if they actually catch fishermen. Uh, but I think um, for the depths that I do and the water that I do, uh, which is in the three to 500 foot range in depths and fairly clear water here in the clay keys. Um, you really do have to kind of look at specifically, I guess, more to what colors and uh, light saturation and diffusion in the water. I'm going to put a graph up. Um, and you can kind of check that out. Um, and basically what that shows is the deeper in the water column you go, uh, colors start basically diffusing and disappearing. So for example, uh, reds tend to disappear the, the quickest in the 20 foot depth range. Reds will basically disappear. Um, you'll just start, they'll turn basically grayish, uh, bluish, greenish, and you'll, you'll just see the, the object shape, but you really just, tints of it, but you won't really see color anymore. Versus the greens and the blues that can go 100 to 200 feet before they lose their color, although they get kind of washed out now. So that color spectrum thing kind of is a, an issue. Um, now when you're talking fishing on the flats or shallow water or top water lures, yeah, it probably does make a difference that you kind of do want to match the hatch or you want to make a color so it distinctly pops out for that aggression hit. But for the deeper jigs, I think it's a, a little bit more black and white and what really works and what doesn't or can't work. Um, I really do believe the, the shape of the lures really make a difference is the, my main part, kind of concern is that they'll see the silhouette of something and if that resembles what they're eating and then you're, you're more inclined to get a hit. Now to to what the video is about, like um, I have a couple videos and I'll post a link for them in regards to how I buy and where I buy them from and how I assemble these um, home based lures. But uh, basically what I've started out with is uh, these bare bones jigs. Um, start no coloration to them, just the basic, the lead to them. Then uh, I always start out by painting them with some white primer. Okay, I think white is a very good color um, for everything. So I, I'm fine with just, if I don't want the metal, and a lot of times what I do is I'll put one side is white and the other side I'll leave that metal color for a little bit of that little metallic shine to it. Um, and I think that mimics kind of like what bait fish are out there. They're not uh, uh, chartreuse or bright orange or blue. They tend to be, um, the body bellies tend to be white. The sides have a little bit of a sparkle to it. And along the top tends to have a green or blue or the most common baits around uh, the keys at least. So I kind of met, figure I match that by just spreading them with the, the white there and leaving the metallic. But I start with some basic white, normal, white, fast drying, spray enamel, white primer. And that goes on first. And the uh, net result is I just get the same lures basically with a little bit of white shine to it. Okay. Then I start going to the bedazzling part. And uh, one of the things I wanted to test is I want to test kind of like economical uh, fairly quick and easy. Um, you have to understand is that vertical jigs, or at least for me, don't survive very long. Um, they get a couple of trips down to the bottom. I'm lucky if I get two, maybe three fish out of them before they get gobbled up, taken down to the wreck, sharks, barracudas, kingfish, uh, a bad knot, a bad line, and stuff. Uh, they, get, they get hammered and then uh, they get tested right away and they, I lose quite a few of them. Uh, you'll see a lot of my videos, I kind of apply the, the two and done rule where once I lose two lures or now I've got such a backlog, I'm probably going to move it up to three. Um, but once I lose those couple of lures, then I call it for a day because you got to understand like I'm using cheap lures where I maybe have three bucks into them, maybe four bucks or the store bought ones, I've got five bucks on them. But realistically, vertical jigs cost 10 to $15 each and you can spend 25, 30, $40 per jig. And so you can imagine losing those, uh, even just a couple of them, and you're into a $100 trip right away, and that, that gets a little bit crazy. So I want to kind of keep those in that 
mindfulness of a little bit of economical scale. So um, one of the shiny things I decided to do on uh, my home ones is uh, try this Rust-Oleum metallic finish. It's kind of like a chrome paint that you can buy at the uh, guy at Home Depot, five bucks. And uh, after I did the white primer, then I spray them and you get kind of like a finish like this. Not exactly chrome bumper shine, um, but you do get a, a decent glisten to it. Uh, you compare it against the basic flat jig and uh, you can see a pretty good difference there um, in regards to the shine. So I think uh, in ease of use, I would say it's uh, very easy to use. Just well, after I do the primer, I probably wouldn't even do the primer, just shoot it with the white and you get a little bit of a shine to it. And that tends to work out fairly well. And I've got the white on the back where I always like to do the contrast where um, it's got a little bit of a shine, a little bit of white to it, and then that goes to there. So I give that a C plus in regards to outcome. Uh, the second one I'm going to did was this good old glitter sparkles. Um, this little tube of glitter was $2.47 and it's just a canister of glitter, loose glitter. And the way I applied that is I take the, uh, the lure, I'll hit it with the, the white primer, and then while the primer is still wet, I'll just lightly sprinkle on the glitter. You don't want to go too much because then it gets really gummed up full of it, but just a light across it. I have a feeling I could probably do 50 lures with just this little tube here. So economies of skill, it's a pretty good deal. You do get a pretty good shine to it. I mean, you do definitely get sparkly shine to it. Um, negatives on it is that this stuff will flake off and your wherever you do it and anywhere in the surrounding vicinity will look like you murdered a, a stripper, but you'll never get this stuff out of here. But Again, uh, two or three times down there and it's going to be gone, so it seems to work fine. And the majority of it is stuck, and it's stuck pretty well. Definitely a lot of good shine to it. So I'd probably give that a B um, in regards to cause and effect there. The third thing I did is I got this Scotch, I think it's 3M Scotch brand uh, glitter tape. Um, it's just like uh, regular Scotch tape, but just with a glitter pattern on it. And I got this at Office Max. I think I spent almost four bucks, maybe five bucks on it. Um, there's a whole section of different, the wide ones with all the different colors. Um, and then there's a bunch of different metallic colored ones and the thin ones which worked out perfectly. And uh, basically all I did is uh, I run a strip of them along the sides of it. Um, now, because even though this is only three quarters of an inch, I could just put one roll on it, but then you have the rounded edges. So it kind of crinkles on the edges. And I think it'll start peeling off because it's not sealed right against the metal where a thin strip goes right along the center line there and it's nice, flush, and flat. So I think that'll stay on uh, a lot better. Um, and you don't need the whole huge amount of shine to it. I think just a little little bit of a touch on the side is plenty of it. Um, I think even to make it even more effective, if I painted uh, the, the back spine a dark color, that would really mimic a bait fish. Again, like I said, the top tends to have a dark, sides have a sparkle and the bottom bellies tend to have a white belly so that would match really well there but uh, this turned out to be uh, very quick and easy just cut off a strip i cut it in half stuck it on there and it's good and done i've tested this and the glitter one i've caught fish on them already um, the tape will come unwound in the water um, with the, if you don't watch the edges once they start peeling they'll come off but again uh, just longevity is just not going to be there and plus if it comes off you come home uh, put on a new strip and it's ready to go again if it survives um, The next way of doing it I went to the dollar store and I found this uh, glittery nail polish um, This is just um, LA colors color craze um, Dollar store so pretty cheap uh, Same stuff. I think it's just glitters in an enamel bait paint basically um, and so what I did is I took the, the white uh, primer and then just basically brushed it on the white primer. Uh, good thing about this is that you have that enam enamel covering on it, so this, the glitter is not going to flake off on it. So it's on there, and that's stuck. Um, it doesn't have as much coverage as just pouring glitter on, but I think that's actually better um, because you don't want too much of a glossing. I mean, just super shine is a little bit too much. But this just gives that little bit of a flake to it. If you ever look like mullet or pilchards, they have that just kind of a light, hazy shine to it. So 
that actually, I'm very, actually very happy with this. And for a buck, it's not too bad. If you want to add more glitter, just take the loose glitter and put it on there and paint over it again. And you could even have a more of a glitter. But I, I'd probably give this a B plus. Um, a buck goes on pretty easily. Negatives, it stinks like a mother. <laughs> so really nasty stink to it if you don't like that smell. Um, and that's kind of the shines, shiny ones that I did there. Um, always remember what I'm basically kind of trying to copy is these are some of the Williamson store made or store bought uh, commercial jigs. Uh, these are the Williamson Benthos. Um, they're an entry level, uh, I'd, pro I'd say that the Chinese multi tons of them made sold really cheaply. Um, they still go for like 10 bucks on the wall if you go to a bait shop, 10 to 15 bucks. Um, I was buying these for five bucks at my local tackle shop in their little five dollar box. They had a bunch of these. So I picked out and picked out all of their five ounce ones, which is the main weight that I use, and a couple of sevens and a couple of three ounces. For five bucks, they're good setups. They got good split rings, good hooks. Um, got a good, I like the, the knife jig. Um, because of the depths, I need things that will go straight to the bottom really quickly, and that's what these knife jigs do. I think the profile matches the bait fish nicely. And uh, they don't wear you out because they are, uh, being that knife jig, you can jig them up the water column fairly easily. So uh, after half a dozen, three, four hundred foot wind ups, you get pretty tired. So it does make a difference there. But as you can see, the, they've got the, uh, even compared to like the, the chrome paint is fairly similar. They have a bit of an oyster pattern to it. So that's a little bit of a difference, but even versus like the sparkle shines, um, you have a, a pretty good match there. So that's kind of what I'm trying to match, but at not the cost. Um, in regards to coloration, uh, I've got some uh, old uh, chartreuse lure and jig finish paint. So um, this is kind of what I've been doing is I'll have the white side and then I'll put a little bit of a chartreuse on the other side or just do chartreuse and then the bare metal. And uh, that, that's my uh, contrasting colors there for the little bit of a flash to it. Very easy to go on, kind of neutral. Um, upper water column, I think it might help out uh, being able to see the color there. Uh, that'll work for the plagics, the tune is especially when I get to the upper water column. I'm just ripping it, I'm not jigging anymore, and I'm just trying to bring it up for a, a Wahoo and a Bonita a Tunas. They'll attack things that are just zipping up there. Um, but that color might help out in that 100 foot range uh, and up to the top. Now this though, on the other hand, is um, a glow-in-the-dark acrylic paint. And I got that at the uh, local arts place for, I think I spent like four bucks for it. Two ounces, little a tube there but surprisingly i was very surprised i should know it's acrylic paint so it's not like water-based paint where it's going to come off it's actually acrylic paint sticks really well it goes on very easily i just use a q-tip and wipe it on there but it does glow in the dark and i could take it into the bathroom in the dark and it and it glows you can actually see the glow and you can see the lure so i think that's about perfect it's not a nuclear glow like a flashlight bright super which uh i think is better for fishing um I primarily actually used these originally for uh, salmon fishing back on the west coast and doing a night jigging for salmon in the rivers. And what you want is you just want that light hue of a glow there to attract them. You don't want a, a big flashlight that's going to scare them. And I think down in the depths, this will hold that the glow to it in three, four, five hundred foot where it's going to show up and be like something, maybe a squid or something that's glowing and uh, will be a very good attractant. So I like that uh, a lot. So I think uh, even on the, the over the white, I'll probably always go for this glow with some of the reflective uh, shiny stuff as well. But anyway, that's the Bedazzle My Lures video. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get to do some more offshore stuff here coming soon. And uh, actually I actually have a couple tarpon videos too, but I don't want to inundate everybody i think people are getting tired of them but i'll make that a separate one so i won't attach it but anyways that's it hopefully you enjoyed that i'll talk to you later bye